So now we're going to work with the complex trinomials. And I promise you that this is going to be the easiest way you've ever learned to factor complex trinomials. It's fast, it's simple. I know some teachers do some sort of crossing the numbers and they do some decomposition, but that takes way too much time. I promise you this is going to be the easiest thing you've ever seen. So on the website, uh, my PB Wiki site, I will um, put the link to this with this YouTube video and you can go there and you can print out this handout, which is Factoring Polynomials, a review. These are all the factoring skills that you need to know. We've done common factors, we've done simple trinomials, and today we're going to do the complex trinomials. So I'm showing this today because there is a wonderful little poem that's going to go with this that's going to make your life so simple. Once you've done it a few times, you're not going to need the poem. So complex trinomials are trinomials where the coefficient of x squared is not 1. And that means after you factored. If there's a common factor and you end up with a 1 in front, then you just go back and use the simple trinomial rules. But this one is for situations where the, the coefficient of x, of x squared is not a 1. So for instance, this question here. Now I have a 6, 6x six squared, and I have minus 12. I can't factor out the 6 because this doesn't have any anything to take from it. I can't divide 1 by 6 or it'd end up with a, a fraction. It would just make a mess. So you need to know what the first term is, what the middle term is, and the last. And so I write that out for you right here. The first term is 6. The last is minus 12. Their product, product of the first and the last, product is minus 72. The one in the middle is a 1. So here's a little poem. Now you might think it's silly and you might think, oh, I don't need that silliness in my life, but my silly rules have always worked well for my students and they come back from university with excellent marks. So listen, the product of the first and the last, the sum of the one in the middle, find two numbers that match the above, take your time, continue to fiddle. Okay, so the product of the first and the last is minus 72. The sum of the one in the middle is a 1. Now find two numbers that multiply to minus 72 and add to positive 1. And you should say, oh, that's 9 and negative 8. So here's my two special numbers, 9 and minus 8. 9 times minus 8 is minus 72. 9 plus minus 8 is 1. Once you found those numbers, these numbers here are irrelevant. Okay, you used those to find these special numbers. Make two fractions with the first on the bottom. Reduce, let's reduce the fraction, and then you can stop. The answer is there before your eyes, the x on the bottom, the other on top. So here's my two special numbers, and the first number is a 6. So I make two fractions with the 6 on the bottom. I reduce the fraction. So 9 over 6 becomes 3 over 2, and I'm done. Minus 8 over 6 becomes minus 4 over 3, and I'm done. The answer is there before your eyes, the x on the bottom, the other on top. So this is 2x plus 3, and this is 3x minus 4. And there they go right here. You can expand if you want to double check, or you can plug in x equals 1 into each of these brackets and x equals 1 in here and see if you get the same answer. Okay, so product of the first and the last. We'll go over that as we do some examples here. So here's my first question. The product of the first and the last. So the first is a 2. The last is a 9. Product of 2 and 9 is 18. The sum of the 1 in the middle. The sum has to be 9. So I have two numbers that multiply to 18 and add to 9. So 1 and 18, I can't make a 9 with 2 and 9. I wouldn't make a 9. 3 and 6, bingo. So I put 3, 6, 3, 6. They're both positive. Don't have to change the signs. So now the next part of the poem, this is like the simple trinomials, right? If this was simple trinomial, you just plug these in with your x's. But now I'm going to make two fractions using these numbers, not these ones. You don't, don't need them anymore. Make two fractions with the first on the bottom. The first is a 2. 
reduce and then you can stop. Well, three over two, I can't reduce that one. I'll put a little box over it. Six over two is the same as three over one. The answer is there before your eyes, the X on the bottom. So I'll put an X with these ones, the other on top. So there you read it. 2X plus 3, X plus 3. So write 2X plus 3, X plus 3. Okay, you might want to double check. So you can see that 2X times X is 2X squared. 3 times 3 is 9. And I get a 2X plus uh, this month here, we've got uh, 6x and 3x make our 9x. Okay, so you can double check. You can expand to check your answer. You can should never make a mistake factoring because you can expand to check it. Okay, let's go to the next one here. 5x minus 11x plus 2. The product of the first and the last, that's 10. The sum of the one in the middle, that's minus 11. Find two numbers that match the above. Take your time. Continue to fiddle. So 10 and 11, they're really close to one another, aren't they? So normally when it's that close, one is probably 10 and one is a 1, right? But I want them to be negative when I add them together. So if I just put 10 and 1 here, that would work here, but it would not add to negative 11. So that means they're both negative. So now I use these two numbers, so I'm going to put minus 10, minus 1. Make two fractions with the first. What's the first number? Look up here, it's a 5. Reduce, and then you can stop. So this one is reduced, nothing to do with it. So this is going to be 5x minus 1 will be one of my factors. And this you can divide by 5. So that gives me minus 2 over 1. I don't leave much room there. Okay, so it gives me x minus 2, x minus 2 times 5x minus 1. Double check the first and last, you'll be sure the rest is going to work. 5x squared minus 2 times minus 1 is 2. Bang, done. So easy. Okay, question number 3. First and the last. Product of 10 and 3 is 30. The sum is minus 17. So I want 30 and minus 17. Now remember, if the product is positive and the sum is negative, they both must be negative numbers. So 30 divided by 2 is 15, and 2 and 15 would make a 17. They both have to be negative. Minus 15, minus 2, double check, minus, minus, yes. So now I make two fractions with the first on the bottom. See, I took this one, put it here, this one, I put it here. You don't need these numbers anymore. You reduce these fractions. Minus 15 over 10, both divide by 5. Minus 3 over 2. This both divides by 2. And I put an x with the one on the bottom, the other on top. Read it. 2x minus 3, 5x minus 1. And you're done. Look how quick. Could that have been any easier? No decomposition, no crazy multiplication of stuff, just straight up fast math. 10x squared, that makes plus 3. Done. Okay, a few more, and then we'll leave you to do some practice. You must practice these. Product of 5 times minus 3, minus 15. Sum minus 14. Minus 15, minus 14. They're one apart. Um... This is negative, this is negative, so that means this has to be, one is positive, one is negative. So which one is negative? I want the sum to be negative, so the larger one must be negative. I write them out one more time. I make two fractions with the first on the bottom. This one's done. Reduce, and then you can stop. I'm gonna write it this way this time, because I ran out of room. Divide by 5, minus 3, and 1. Now, make sure when you're doing these, this work here is off to the side, right? You don't want to put it under here. You just want your answer here. So that gives me 5x plus 1 and x minus 3. 5x squared, that's minus 3. That's minus 15 plus 1 is minus 14. Bingo, it's right. 
Okay, number five. Product of the first and the last, 2 times 15, 30, sum of the one in the middle, 11. Find the two numbers that match the above. Take your time, continue to fiddle. Okay, 30. 1 and 30, no, 2 and 15, no, 3 and 10, no, 4 doesn't go into 30, 5 goes into 36 times, and a 5 and a 6 would give me an 11. Those are my numbers. 5 times 6 is 30, 5 plus 6 is 11. Make two fractions. So you write your two special numbers, they come here. Forget about these guys. Make two fractions with the first on the bottom, that's a 2. Reduce, can't reduce this one. This one, yep, 6 over 2 is 3 over 1. Put a little box around it if you want. Your x is on the bottom, your other is on top. So that's 2x plus 5. 2x plus 5 times x plus 3. Do a quick double check to make sure you're right. 2x squared, that gives me 15. It's looking pretty good. Okay? And the last one, I threw in this one because it's a little complicated. Look, 6x squared, 9xy, 3y squared. So I've got x squareds, y squareds. And the most important thing you should look at right away is that there is a common factor. And that would be 3 goes into each one of these. So make sure you put the 3 out front. Don't just throw it away. I've seen that many times. And I write out 3xy and a y squared. And now I'm ready to use this complex trinomial using the same rules. Forget about the x squared, the y squared at the end here. We're just going to add a y in to our final answer. So just pretend it's not even there. Product of the first and the last, that's 2. Sum of the 1 in the middle, minus 3. Two numbers that multiply to 2 and add to negative 3. So if they multiply to a positive and add to a negative, they both need to be negative. So minus 2 and minus 1, that would give me minus 3. So product of the first and the last, sum of the one in the middle, find the two numbers that match you above, take your time, continue to fiddle. You won't find this poem anywhere else on the internet. Make two fractions with the first on the bottom, because I made it up. Uh, reduce, and then you can stop. This one I can't reduce. This one becomes minus 1 over 1. Am I off the page? Maybe. Okay. So the answer is there before your eyes. The x on the bottom, the other on top. This time it's a y. So this is going to be an x and this is going to be a y here. So you must keep the 3 here or else you would be changing the equation, right? So I have 2x minus y. And this one's going to be x minus y. And that's it. Okay, so make sure that you go to uh, the link that'll be down below. Make sure you check it out because you might want to print out that handy little handout here that I, I've uh, saved on that website for you to print out. And right there's your little poem. I didn't want to write it out. Let me know how this is going for you. If you find it much easier and you've done it before, that's awesome. Send me a note, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe. Bye.